I want to start with some context. This is a satellite view of Central California's San Joaquin Valley from June 18th, 2023, the day I visited this area. In the valley is Tulare Lake, a lake that is the subject of this video. On the other side of the Sierra Nevada is Owens Lake, a lake I visited recently. But take a look at this area exactly one year prior, June 18th, 2022. The lakes I just mentioned are not there, and there's really no snowpack to speak of in the Sierra Nevada. It's a very different view. So what changed between June 2022 and June 2023? What happened? Well, a magnificent winter, a really, really, really wet winter, the winter of 2022 to 2023. It brought back prehistoric lakes from the dead, lakes we haven't seen in the area for decades. And we're going to check out Tulare Lake, the most impressive one of these prehistoric lakes in this video. All right, I'm driving in the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley to be specific. It's the southern end of the Central Valley of California. It's a great, great valley in terms of its size. And it's almost exclusively dedicated to agriculture because the climate here is so accommodating, so mild, it rarely freezes. that You can grow so much produce, so many different kinds of, of crops. I'm on my way to see Tulare Lake, which is a prehistoric lake that is back from the dead because of a wet winter, so it should be pretty interesting. It's flooded thousands of acres of farm fields. I just wanted to stop and see some grapes because this is kind of cool and foreign to me. Look at that! Real green grapes being grown. That is really cool. I mean, you know, you buy green grapes all the time. You buy grapes all the time at the grocery store, and this is where it comes from. That's very cool. I'm getting off the highway and uh, this road should take us to the lake. All right, here we're coming up to the end of the road. So I'm gonna find a place to park and then we can walk around. Look at those birds. Never seen birds like that before. All right, here I am at the shore of Tulare Lake before I go to the water. Look at how much destruction the flooding has wrought on the agriculture here. This is not even water right here, but it's just silt from, I'm assuming, when there was high water in this area. And all of these trees, all the trees in this orchard are now dead. But this is a hot spot for, bir for birds right now. Lots of different types of birds that I'm seeing. And interesting looking birds too. Not sure what all of them are. Oh, but look at these ones. They're kind of playing tug of war with that stick. So all of this water is flooding fields that were orchards, that were farms. It's a massive lake and you can't see the end of it. Uh, this is just a small portion of it. But Tulare Lake was once a massive lake. It was the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi River. And it was in the middle of the San Joaquin Valley of California. Until... Europeans settled California. They drained Tulare Lake so they could farm. But last winter was so wet that it reformed the ancient lake, Tulare Lake. And that is why we are dealing with what we're dealing with now. But the Central Valley of California used to be a big marsh. It actually used to be a marsh all the way down, not just around Tulare Lake. And it was the agriculture that 
led to the destruction of all that marshland. But the Central Valley now is an extremely productive piece of land. It produces a big share of the world's produce and it is very, very important. So like I said, Tulare Lake basically permanently disappeared in the early 1900s after the Central Valley was drained and the inflows to Tulare Lake were cut off because there are a lot of rivers that feed into Tulare Lake, but they're now dammed. And there's so many reservoirs in Central California. It's the rain and snow for, uh, in the Southern Sierras that feeds into Tulare Lake. And this year, those those waterways are raging. Even the Kern River right now in the middle of June is still insane. So yeah, it's been over 20 years since the lake even partially filled up due to a wet winter. Um, I think 1997 was the last time that anything like this happened. But this, what happens, what happened this year in 2023 was really, really severe. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of farmland that is lost and billions and billions and billions of dollars of losses that are incurred as a result of that. And so it's unclear when this land will be reclaimed. Uh, it could be a year or two or more, but it's hard to say. For now, it's a big lake. And as you can see in this little bit of Tulare Lake, this was a relatively young orchard. These are young trees. And so this was just a big investment that was made right here, you know, locally. And these trees, these young trees didn't last too long. So uh, it's just a story that is repeated. And by the way, it's not just orchards that have been flooded. It's also human structures and property and buildings and houses. So it's a lot. And just to be clear, Tulare Lake is not finished filling up, actually. It's still filling up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Kern River is insane right now. It's absolutely a raging torrent. And that water does at some point drain into Tulare Lake. So Tulare Lake is still going to fill up. There's still snow in the Sierra Nevada that has to melt this summer. And it will be going to Tulare Lake. So it is still on the up and up in terms of its volume. And it's unclear, like I said, how long it'll last. If we get more winters that are even remotely as severe as this past winter, Tulare Lake is gonna be here for a long time, for a relatively long time. But if we get a bunch of dry years, which is totally possible, then uh, it's probably not gonna last too long. We are heading into El Nino though, which is typically a very, very wet uh, pattern for the West Coast. So for California in the Southwest at least. So we'll see how this upcoming winter is, but yeah, uh, Tulare Lake is crazy. Central Valley should make you think of the Grapes of Wrath. Cause uh, that book is about the uh, Okies that came to California. I think these are olives or almonds, not sure. So I'm wondering if this is that failed train project, the failed high-speed rail project that was supposed to connect Los Angeles with San Francisco. This looks like a segment, doesn't it? Because that would go through the Central Valley. I think now all they can do is just a segment to Bakersfield or something. Um, but yeah, it's a, it was kind of a pathetic thing because that was how many billions of dollars and they couldn't even get it done. Corcoran looks a little bourgeoisie for this area. Fun fact, these flowers look nice and they're big and bushy and beautiful, but they are toxic. They are very, very deadly. Actually, if you eat a flower or a leaf, I think you might die. At least a child or a dog would, but yeah, I don't know. I think they're called oleander or something like that. It's actually really relaxing to drive these roads. Very flat, straight, boxy, much like the Midwest, but it is pretty desolate out here.
Tulare Lake is best viewed from the northwestern side though. And look at that. This was endless California farmland until this last winter. At least it was for a long time until this last winter. Now it's a huge lake. Yeah, it is so big that you cannot see the other side of it. You can see some structures that are flooded, little islands in the lake, but that's it. Luckily, there is this levee here to protect, you know, this guy's house and everything, but if there wasn't a levee here, the lake would not be contained and there would probably be more widespread flooding. All right, so that was Tulare Lake. It's June, 2023. I first stopped on the eastern side of the lake and then I drove to the northwestern side of the lake. The eastern side of the lake was cool to see the uh, orchards flooded, but the northwestern side has the more expansive open view of the water. So that was my visit to Tulare Lake. I remember reading about Tulare Lake years ago and how California used to have an inland sea, that the Central Valley used to be a vast wetland dotted with big freshwater lakes, the biggest lakes west of the Mississippi River. But to finally see this come back after decades and decades, and in some cases over 100 years, that was super, super cool. I really enjoyed this trip, and I hope you guys did too. So thanks for watching. Oh,